Hi everybody, welcome back to Podasso. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an interior for your no content book to upload on Amazon KDP using Canva. Since in the last video, I showed you a profitable keyword, which was kindergarten writing paper landscape. And many of you requested that I made a tutorial on how to create the interior. Here we are. Simply follow along this tutorial and stick until the end because I've got a surprise for you. The first thing to do before opening a design software is to study what our best-selling competition is doing. Let's go on amazon.com, type in the search bar our keyword, which was kindergarten writing paper landscape. Let's pick the best results, meaning the books that have the lowest BSR. In this case, I see this one has a BSR of 6,000 and the other one are a bit higher. So I think I'm going to study only the first product. I click on it. Click on the cover and look inside this book. As you can see, the first page is a belongs to page where kids usually write their personal information like the name, the class, the year and so on. We can add this page inside our book as well or we can simply skip it. There's also extra pages here showing the kid how to write the alphabet letters and some sample sentence starters. If you want to do a high quality book that stands out from your competition, do a little bit of research on what this type of customers might want to find in this sort of book and then create those extra pages. In my case, I'm going to skip all of this and go straight to the main pages, which are lined pages in which the lines do not go from left to right, but from top to bottom. There are two continuous lines and in the middle of them a dotted line. This layout will help little kids to practice their handwriting. The entire book is going to look like this. So once we have designed this layout, the book is pretty much over. Now that we know what the inside looks like, we can close this page and look for other useful information that our competition is giving us. What I'd like to see is the number of pages, in this case is 111, and the trim size, in this case is 8.5 per 11 inches. Once you have these three information, which is the layout of the pages, the number of pages and the dimensions, you want to repeat this process for at least one or two more books of your best-selling competition. Another useful thing I do is look for the bad reviews that customers might have left in this book. Knowing the mistakes these self-publishers have made can actually help us make a better version of the same product. And usually I click for the one-star reviews or two-star reviews. After going through the negative reviews, I usually take some time to read the positive ones too, because if the negative reviews tell us what we shouldn't do or what we should add that is missing in this product, the good reviews tell us what is already working and we want to make sure to have these positive features in our product as well. So you scroll down and start reading whatever the customers are saying about this book. Once we have all this information, we can open our design software. In my case, it's going to be Canva. If you don't have it already, click on the link and create an account. Let's start by clicking on the top right hand button, create a design. Here you want to go on custom size, switch from pixels to inches and here we type the trim size we chose. In my case it's going to be 8.5 per 11 inches because we have an interior without bleed. In case I wanted to add bleed to my interior I would have to add 0.125 inches to the width and 0.25 inches in the height. Let me take a moment to explain you why our interior does not need bleed. Let's go back to our best-selling book. Click on the look inside and go to the page we want to recreate. Now you can see that any graphic element in this page is somehow contained in a rectangular area and nothing is touching the end of the page nor on the bottom, the top side, the left or the right side. So the rule is, if all the elements stays inside a safe area, which is defined by the margins of our KDP book, we can choose a no bleed interior. On the other hand, if any of those elements 
even if one of these lines is stretching to the end of the pages or across the margins, we need a bleed interior. Now let's go back to Canva and delete these parts because we don't need any bleed. As you see, our width is 8.5 inches and our height is 11 inches. Create new design and now we can start designing our page. The first thing to do is to set up our margins. KDP gives us precise value based on the page count and whether our book has bleed or no bleed. In the KDP website, in the set trim size bleed and margins page, I leave the link in the description, scroll down until you see this margins table. Here you have the number of pages from 24 to 150 pages. Our inside margin has to be 0.375 inches. What about the outside margins? In case we have no bleed, our outside margins, which are the top, the bottom, and the one opposite to the inside margin, have to be at least 0.25 inches. In case we have bleed, they have to be at least 0.375 inches. These are the values in case our book has between 25 and 150 pages. Since our competition had 111 pages, I picked 100 pages, so I have to follow these values. Remember, this table says at least, meaning that your margins can be even bigger, but this is the minimum margin size that KDP requires from us. Now, let's go back to our Canva page. And since I want to make this tutorial the easiest for you, I'm going to do the inside and outside margins all the same size. So instead of setting the inside margin to 0.375 and the outside to 0.25, I'm going to go for 0.5 inches for all of them. How do I do that? Type on your keyword the letter R. So a rectangle will show up in your page. In alternative, you can go to the elements section and here in lines and shape, click on the square and you will have a similar shape. Now we want to drag down one of these corners of the rectangle until we have a shape of 0.5 width. Now let's stretch the height of this rectangle until it reaches the end of the page and let's position it to the left side of this page. So click on position and click on left. Now you want to repeat this process for all the other three sides of this page. To duplicate one element in Canva, select the rectangle, go here on duplicate, click on it, and you will have duplicated your element. Now let's position it to the other sides of the page. Now that I created this sort of gray frame around my page, the next thing you want to do is go on elements, click on lines and shape, and click on this shape called the square border. Now you want to change its color by clicking on this icon, drag it down by one of its corner to reduce the thickness of the line, and once I'm happy, I position it right next to the gray area, like this. I drag each side of this red frame until it touches all the gray rectangles, like this. Now I can proceed with deleting the gray rectangles by selecting them and clicking on Ctrl X if you're on a window or Command X if you're on a Mac. Now we have set the margins for our KDP book. On each side we have a 0.5 inches distance from the end of the pages to the safe area where we can design anything we want. If we work inside this red frame, we are safe to go. Now let's start to design our page, which has to look like this. So let's go on Elements, Lines and Shape and click on the line. Click here and drag this cursor left to reduce the thickness of the line. Once I have the right value, I click on the line and rotate it by 90 degrees and position it to one side of the page. Make it longer, but make sure that it does not cross the red frame that we have designed. Let's position this in the middle by clicking on Position and middle. Now we want to duplicate this line and create a dotted line in the middle. So I duplicate once more one of these lines 
and I position it in the center. Having selected these lines, I click here on style, choose dotted, and we have a dotted line. Now, since I think these dots are too small and too close to one another, select this line, click on weight, and increase the thickness of this line. I'm going to go for a line weight of four. Now, I think that these two lines are a little bit too thin compared to this middle one, so I'm going to select them both and increase the value of the weight to two, like this. Now, since I want the same distance, from one line to another, I select all three, click on position and click on space evenly, horizontally. Now I think I'm going to tone down the colors of these lines that might be a little bit too dark. So I select them both, click on the color icon and select one of these lighter color. Now let's do the same with the dotted line. I want it to be even lighter. So click on the icon color, go for something like this and see what is the result. Now it's time to duplicate this set of lines on the rest of the page. But since every time I click on this area, I manage to move unintentionally this red frame, I want to show you how to deal with this problem. Click on the red frame, click on lock. Now you can touch any of the other elements in your Canva without unintentionally move the margins. So let's select all the three lines, click on group, click on the grouped elements, Click on Shift and Alt if you're on a window or Option if you're on a Mac. Keep pressing on those keys while you drag the element on the other side. Release your keys and you finally have duplicated your element. Repeat the process for at least five to six times. I went for seven sets of lines just like my competition but you can see that there is not the same distance from each set of lines. So how do I make all these elements equidistant from one another? Position the extreme elements, which is this one and this one, where you want them to be. In my case, I'm going to move this one around a little bit. When you're happy with the position of these two elements, select all the lines, click on position and click on space evenly horizontal. The last thing you want to do is to position all these lines in the center of the page. You can do that by selecting them all and move them until you see this dark pink line appearing in the middle of the page. Now the left line and the right line have the same distance from the red frame. So we're good to go. As the last thing you want to get rid of these margins because you don't want them to show up in your actual book. So you have two options here. You can delete them by clicking on them and click on backspace or right click and delete them. Or you can simply make them transparent by clicking on them, click on this transparency icon and dragging your cursor down to zero. I usually prefer to make it transparent because in case I might need the margins once more, I just need to click on them and make it visible by bringing the transparency up to 100 again. Now that we have designed our page, since all the pages in our book are going to look like the same, we simply have to duplicate this design for the number of pages we want. I decided to go for 100 pages, and to do that, I have two options. The first one is to duplicate this page 100 times in Canva by clicking on this icon, duplicate page, and repeat this operation for 100 times. But since it might take you a long time to do so, I prefer to create a 20 pages file, export it as a PDF print, and then use a free online tool, which is I love PDF, to multiply it by five and get a 100 page file in a much faster way. I'm going to choose the second option. So once I have 20 pages that look like all the same, I click on download, click on PDF print. I leave this crop marks and bleed unchecked, select all pages. So make sure that all pages are selected and then click on download. Once the download is over, I usually name my design with my keyword which was kindergarten writing paper landscape underscore. I usually put the trim size, so 8.5 per 11 and the number of pages. So underscore 100. The last thing I write down is underscore interior because in this way I'm able to distinguish this file from the cover file just by looking at its name. Once I've named my design, I click on save. Now let's go on Google and type ilovepdf.com. You will end up in this website. Click here on merge PDF. Click on select PDF files. 
Select the file you just created in Canva, click on open. And now you can see here that we have our 20 page file. Now we have to upload it another four times. So we have 20 pages times five and we will have a 100 page file. So click on this plus, click on upload from your computer and select the same file. Repeat this process for another three times until you have five of the same files uploaded. Now click on Merge PDF, download Merged PDF and save it. Let's open it. And you can see here we have a 100 page file. As I promised in the beginning of this video, I have a gift for you. I've created my own version of this kindergarten writing paper landscape. It's at 8.5 per 11 inches, 100 pages PDF. And if you go on my Gumroad shop, you can find the link in the description. You can download it for free. Now, if you like this video, please show me some support by giving me a like and subscribing to the channel. If you also want to be notified when the next video is out, click on the bell and activate all notifications. Having said that, have a great day and see you in the next video.